Welcome to the Cord Cutters LI channel. If you have an Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K and you're running out of space for all your apps and movies and TV shows, this video is for you. If you have a recent 4K Fire Stick, chances are, at the time of this recording, it has Fire OS version 6. Earlier this year, I made a video on how to add storage to the new non 4K Fire Stick and the Fire TV Stick Lite, which both have Fire OS version 7. I'll put a link to that video in the description below if you have one of those. I didn't think I'd be making a video on expanding the storage on Fire TV devices running Fire OS version 6 here in 2021. I really thought by now Amazon would have a new 4K version of the Fire Stick with Fire OS version 7, which is so much easier and faster than what I'm going to show you today. With no sign of that coming anytime soon, and since the 4K Fire Stick is still the most popular version sold, for good reason, I thought it was time to make a video. There's a bunch of stuff I'm going to go over with you step by step in this video. You can use the clickable sections below the video to skip ahead or back to any specific part. When you finish watching this video, you have all the info you need to expand the storage on your Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K. But first, if you like what I do here at Quarter Cutters LI, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're ready to learn how to say goodbye to your Fire Stick 4K storage issues forever, grab your remotes and let's go! If you're in the market for a VPN service to help you stay connected and protected while streaming, have a click on one of the links in the description below. Doing so not only gets you a great discount on your next VPN subscription, it also helps to support the Cord Cutters Li channel. Okay, so before we get into the steps of exactly how to expand the storage, let's talk about the type of storage we're going to add and the hardware that we need to make this happen. There are two types of storage. There's internal or device storage, and then there's external storage. Both of these can be added to the Fire Sticks with the built-in USB port. So the procedure will allow you to add all internal storage, all external storage, or a combination or mixed storage. And that's what we're going to show you today. The hardware you need to do this is rather inexpensive. I'm going to be using this SanDisk Ultra USB 3.0 16 gigabyte thumb drive. The other thing you're going to need is an OTG cable. If you're currently using an Amazon Ethernet adapter, you're not going to be able to additionally add the thumb drive. So you're going to want to get this Ugreen USB hub with Ethernet adapter. I'll put Amazon links down below for all the items I'm using in this video. So back to the type of storage. We're going to have mixed storage. And this, as I said, is a 16 gigabyte drive. So I'm going to probably do a 50-50 split. I'm going to have 50% of that or about 8 gigs added to the internal storage or system storage. And then I'm going to add the other remaining 8 gigs for external storage. Typically, you'd want to pick a much larger drive, say 64 gigs or 128 gigabytes. The procedure is the same. However, you might just want to vary the percentages. Like where I'm doing 50-50 here, um, if you go to a 64 gig, you might want to go like 40 internal, 60 external. 128 gigs, you might want to go 20 internal, 80 external. And I'll show you how to do that coming up. Since I use my Wi-Fi connection for my Amazon 4K Fire Stick, right now I don't have the need for any other USB devices. I'm just going to go ahead and use the OTG cable without the USB hub. So now I'm going to go ahead and connect the Amazon 4K Fire Stick and show you how it's done. All right, in order to get started, there are a couple of settings we need to change and some information we need to get. So we'll go over, all the way over to the right, and go to the gear, and move down to My Fire TV. Go to Developer Options. You're going to need to turn both of these on, ADB Debugging and Apps from Unknown Sources. So we'll go ahead and do that. You'll get a message here. You can just click Turn On. Then we go back out a level, go up to About, and move down to Network. We need our IP address here. And you need to write this down because you'll need it later. But don't write my IP address down because it will most likely be different for you. And we can hit the back button. Before we go any further, I do want to click on here just to verify. If you look right here, we do have software version Fire OS 6 point something. That's exactly what we need for this instructional video. If you have an older version Fire Stick that has version 5 something, I would say it's probably just time to get rid of it at this point. If you have a Fire Stick with version 7 for that video, there's a link in the description below for how to add storage to those. Next thing we want to do is install an app called ADB Shell, and you get that using the Downloader app. So let's move over to Downloader and open that up. So from here, we go ahead and type in the address I'm going to show you. Cord 
cordcuttersli.com forward slash ADB and click go. That's going to go ahead and download. You can move over to hit the install. We no longer need this installation file, so move over to delete and over to delete again. Back to home, we hold in the home button and move over to apps. This last app that we installed will be at the bottom of the list, so just move to the left and that'll bring you all the way to the bottom. Let's move this app to the front so we can get to it easily. So hit that little hamburger button or the menu button on your Fire Stick remote and hit move to front. And we'll hit the home and I'll show you where it's at. So it is right here at the front of the list. Go ahead and open that up. Here's where you're going to want to put that IP address that you wrote down earlier. Again, your address, not mine. I'm going to type mine. This is the port number. We'll leave that at 5555. You can go down and click next or you can hit the play button on the remote. I'll click next. And the connect button will already be selected and we click. You'll want to check this box that says always allow from this computer and click OK. When you see that line at the top that says mantis colon forward slash dollar sign, you know that it's successfully connected. So there's a few commands that we're going to need to know here. This is the hardest part by far. So if you can get past this, you're home free. So the first command you need to type here is SM space list hyphen or dash whatever you call it, disks, plural, with a K. And hit run or the play button again. So when we do that, the command's going to run in the background. Hit the back button. So it ran the command, and now it's back at that a prompt that says mantis colon forward slash dollar sign. If you see that, you know the command ran successfully. And the result there, the disk colon 8 comma 0, the actual identification of this disk is the colon 8 comma 0. So write that down, because this could be different on your device, especially if you have more than one drive added. This number will most certainly be different. So just write this down, colon 8 comma 0. And again, that is a 0, not an O. So this next command is going to vary depending on what exactly you want to do. The first option would be to configure the entire USB drive as internal or system storage. And to do that, you would type in this command, sm space partition space disk, in my case, colon 8 comma 0 space private. Or option 2, which is the one we're going to use here, would be sm space partition space disk colon 8 comma 0, again, could vary from yours, and then a space mixed space 50. So let me go ahead and type that command in. Okay, so there we go. And now you can move down and you can either click run or you can hit the play button on the remote, either one. I choose click run. So that's going to run in the background for a while. You can hit the back button to see the status. It looks like it's already completed. But there's another command that we can run to verify that it's completed. And that is df space hyphen h. So df space hyphen or dash h. And that will tell you all the information we need. Hit the back button to see what's happened behind us. All right, so the important bit is this area circled right here. Those last three lines are the ones that are important to us. That first line with the 5.3 gigs of which we've used 62%. The next line is roughly half of the 16 gig drive that I added. So you have 7.2 gigs, only 1% of it's used for storage. 
It probably just has some system files on it and stuff that are that are needed. And then the last line is the external storage with seven plus gigs available there. So that's it. We're done in ADB shell. So you can go ahead and enter out of here. A quick note here, if you go back into ADB shell and those commands escape you, you're not sure what, uh, what you typed earlier, you can just go ahead and connect. And if you hold in the select button, you'll see the previous commands on the list there. So the next thing I want to do is install an app so you can see if it installs on our internal storage or our external storage. So let's go ahead and go back to our downloader app and we'll install an app and see where it goes. I'm just going to type in a address of an app that I'm quite familiar with out there on the interwebs. It's the uh, the Troy Point app. So we'll go home. So let's go ahead and see where that app installed. Go over to the gear. Move down and over to applications. Go to manage installed applications. And we'll go down to that app that we just installed. And as you can see, if you see that little USB symbol there, we know that that was installed to our external storage. It's important to note that not all apps, especially some apps that you might find in the Amazon App Store, may not install on the external storage. And that is only because the writers of those applications um, didn't take into account that that might be something we'd want to do. So it's written that uh, they can only be installed on internal or system storage. So that's another reason why we want to definitely make sure we have plenty of the internal storage available to us. Another way that we can verify that the apps that we install go on to the external storage is to go back into ADB Shell. Since that first app, I've installed a couple of other apps totaling over 200 megabytes. So I'm curious what that looks like in ADB Shell. So let's go ahead and open that up. Keep all that information the same. Go down to connect. When you hold in the select button, you can see the, the commands that you've run recently. This is the command again. Um, it tells you what uh, free space you have. And so we'll go ahead and run that. And we'll go out. And as you can see there, that line where I showed you earlier where the external storage was, we now have 230 megabytes used. Uh, roughly 4% of that drive now is used. The stuff that we install is going to the external storage and leaving the internal storage or system storage alone. So that's it. That was relatively painless, wouldn't you say? If you do have any issues or problems or questions that came up during this process, please leave some comments down below the video. And as always, I will answer you as soon as I see them. And also leave a comment down below if you've tried this and how it went. If you enjoyed today's video, please do click the like button below. And if you want to see more videos when they come out for Cord Cutters LA, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.